Let's get a check now of the top business news stories. Our business editor, Kate Moody, is here. Hi there, Kate. Hi, Tom. Now, the U.S. Central Bank has once again raised interest rates. This is to try and tackle inflation. Yeah, a quarter percent move, which was widely expected. It brings the tar target federal funds rate uh, to between four and a half and four three quarters of one percent. That is the highest le level since 2007. Last year, the Federal Reserve carried out four consecutive rate hikes of three quarters of one percent or 75 basis points uh, before slowing to a half percent move in December, even slower now. Now, that's because consumer prices are rising at a more moderate pace. Inflation dropped to 6.5% in December. That's well off the 9.1% that we saw in June, but still significantly higher than the Fed's 2% target. The Fed's key interest rate trickles down through the banking system, affecting the price that consumers pay on things like car loans, mortgages and credit card bills, as well as the interest they receive on savings accounts. Higher interest rates tend to help lower inflation by encouraging saving rather than spending. The Fed statement saying its monetary tightening will be ongoing as appropriate. That lays the pace, the lays the way uh, for possibly two more interest rates or three in the coming year. Well, the European Central Bank and Bank of England will each be in the spotlight on Thursday. The pace of price rises in the eurozone has been slowing. Inflation for the 20-member bloc was eight and a half percent in January. That's the lowest level since May of last year. And it's down from 9.2% for the Eurozone in December. Core inflation, which excludes changes in volatile food and energy prices, stuck near an all-time high of 5.2%. The ECB is likely to continue raising its key borrowing rate, uh, despite that steadying inflation and stronger-than-expected economic growth for the bloc. Huge protests in the UK, meanwhile, are largely focused on stubbornly high inflation. Overall, consumer prices were 10.5% higher in December than they were a year earlier. Uh, that's still floating near a 40-year high of 11.1%, which was hit in October. Food and energy costs are especially high. Uh, grocery prices rose nearly 17% in the first four weeks of January. That's a record pace. By contrast, public sector wages rose 10 rose 2.7 percent between August and October uh, and just under 7 percent for the private sector. Now, union demands do vary during these strikes, but they are all calling for wages to keep pace with that spiraling cost of living. Many are also protesting a recent law which would limit the ability of workers in key sectors like health care and education to go on strike in an effort by the government to maintain minimum service at all times. Nigeria is preparing for a general election in just under four weeks' time, with insecurity and economic woes topping voters' concerns. The country has seen a shortage of both water and fuel, and more recently, a shortage of cash. An effort to replace its paper money with newly designed notes has been too rushed, say critics, and businesses and consumers are struggling to keep up. Liza Kamenov has more. Queues outside petrol stations and outside banks Residents of Lagos wait for hours to get cash or fuel, but neither are guaranteed. Ahead of the elections, Nigeria's economy is facing two major crises. The first, a cash shortage sparked by the replacement of paper notes with newly redesigned ones as the nation hopes to curb money laundering. In spite of a January 31st deadline, banks don't have enough new currency to swap for the old notes which residents are handing in. A crisis which has left people cashless and has forced businesses to close. The ATMs are not working. Even when you walk into the bank, they will tell you they are not giving out that money, that they don't have the cash, I mean the new notes. So it seems as if this is the only bank that is dispensing money. The deadline for handing in old notes has been pushed back to February 10th. Petrol shortages are also plaguing the country. Nigeria is Africa's biggest crude producer, yet relies on oil imports to meet local demand due to refineries operating below their capacity. Outside this petrol station, frustrated drivers get into a fight as they wait the entire day with no certainty of getting fuel. This is what we see every day and I have to bring my children to school here every day and this is what happens. Less than a month before voting day and frustrations are growing across the country especially since the annual inflation rose over 21% at the turn of the year. Thank you very much indeed for that business update.